All right. 1992 Yamaha FJ1200, in my opinion, uh, a, a, a stellar motorcycle, one of the legendary motorcycles of all time. Certainly the best uh, four-cylinder air-cooled Yamaha um, ever made, and probably one of the best four-stroke air-cooled bikes ever. You know, up there with the with the um, I don't know maybe GS1000, GSX1100 stuff like that. Uh, but certainly a great motorcycle. I love this bike. I had one, bought one almost new in 1990 and ran it around for a year and sold it when I went to university and then bought another one for a couple of years and over the years I've had a lot of these. Uh, I'll tell you about them later. But anyway, so this, so the, these started in 1985 with the 1100. Um, they had different different wheels. The the motor was only 1100. A bit bit revier, I believe. Um, sportier maybe. I don't know. Um, mainly available in a red and white colour and they're a decent bike 1985 you're competing against the gpz 900r you're competing against the uh maybe the cb 1100 honda can't remember what suzuki had at that time uh, not suzuki um yeah they had the katana um but any anyway so so certainly well you know well up the ranks with its uh with its contemporaries and then, you know, there were some uh, claims of low ground clearance and suspension problems, stuff like that. So I think in 87 they upgraded the wheel, so it went to a 17-inch inch front wheel instead of a 16. It got upgraded brakes um, and be better suspension and, and, and bodywork changes. And it kind of retained this style all the way up to 1993. The big thing in about 90 was it, you, you were able to buy ABS anti-lock braking system, so uh, which this one doesn't have actually. And I'm, I've never ridden one with it. I don't know whether it'd be good or bad or whatever. It certainly saves you a little bit of weight. Um, so anyway, what do we got? Well, um, you know, that big almost 1200cc air-cooled four-cylinder engine, four-valve per cylinder, a lot of torque from these bikes, a lot of torque. They're a very grunty motor. And about two years ago, I decided I didn't have a, a kind of fast sports tourer. So I looked around and ended up with a Concourse, a Kawasaki GTR 1000 Concourse. And I got it and it was it's overweight, underpowered, it's a bit of a pig handling and stuff like that. So I didn't really like it. And then then this popped up on Craigslist and I thought, oh, I'll sell the concourse. And when I went to when I bought the concourse, there were millions of them available. And when I went to sell it, there weren't any, so I sold it within like a day and I went up and got this. Um so this is pretty much completely stock, but it has had some work done on the carbs, and the guy told me it had been done in San Diego, so he didn't know how it'd run at this altitude. And I, I, I basically put bigger pilot jets in it. I went up to 45 pilot jets. Uh, over the years, they, they were leaned off to make them pass emissions, which got tighter and tighter. So if you get one of these banger set of 42 and a half or 45 pilot jets in it, and adjust the, the, adjust the screws accordingly, uh, but then it'll start idle and run very, very, very nicely. Apart from that, this is pretty much stock. But they're a stonking great motor. Um, you know, wh this is way better than the Concourse. Obviously, the Concourse is fully spared and had all the integrated bags and stuff like that. And, you know, you can, I think you can buy fairing loads for these if you'd want to, and you can obviously fit bags to them again. But it's just, it's a lovely bike to ride. It's got torque from 1500 RPM all the way up to like 9,500. Um, it turns out about 40 mpg, maybe a little bit less if you thrash it. Funnily enough, I, you know, I had one of these when I was 21 and it would only do about 25 to the gallon. And now I'm a little bit older, it does a lot more. Um, so very popular, very active owners club, very, very active forums. Um, like I said, this one's pretty much almost entirely stock. Uh, and they're just a, a really nice bike to ride. They've just got a really nice feel. The suspension's pretty, pretty decent. And out of the box, so out of the box they work pretty well. Right, but obviously there's a whole host of mods you can you can do to them. The front wheel is narrower than than the FZR wheel, so you can fit an FZR wheel, which allows you to run a 120 tire on the front. This should really have a 110, even though Yamaha specify 120. Um, forks you can upgrade with uh, the cheaper upgrades, progressive fork springs and 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 uh, 15 weight oil, which will run you about 100 bucks. The better upgrade is is some slightly heavier fork springs and then those Race Tech. Is it Race Tech or Gold? Emu uh, fork cartridge emulators which will run you about 300 bucks but it'll make the front end really plush the front end on this is stock i bought some fork springs i was going to put them in a few weeks back but in the end i couldn't be asked um you can also upgrade the brakes on these later brakes off something like an fz1 or something like that they're called the blue dot calipers and i did score a pair of those for about 40 bucks off ebay and haven't got around to to uh to fitting them yet so that's stuff you can do to the front end and obviously if you want to fit you know, even different wheels or different forks, you can do that. Um, you know, it's always upgrades on the, obviously the brakes with Goodridge hoses as well, Brady steel hoses. You, um, there's some talk, people put different clutch master cylinders on to give a, 
a bit more feel. And actually clutches are a bit of a weak point on this bike. This, does, this one does slip ever so slightly. So what I'm going to do is whip the cover off, whip the clutch cover off and put some, some thick washers on, uh, above the springs, put a bit more preload on the springs. So again, I, you know, it slips in the morning when the engine's cold and there's got a lot of oil in it. And then, uh, and then during the day, it's, it's fine. Um, there's also, people also claim there's an issue with these jumping out of second gear. I've never had one that's jumped out of second gear. I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but I don't think it quite affects them as heavily as people do. Um, you know, so if you want to stop that ever happening, just go easy and second gear, which is great because it'll do about 60 in first, something like that. I think the one I had in 1990, I, I, Put a bigger front sprocket by one tooth which is a popular conversion because these are incredibly torquey motor and if you put one sprocket on the uh, up on the front you won't notice a huge amount of difference in terms of like you know performance or you know acceleration of the lab but it'll cruise with a, a few slower revs um the work you can do on the engines is 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 untold you can you know endless rather you know you can fit big bore kits up to about 1370 cc i think it will it, you can do it i mean you have to hog out the casings and and um but you can get big bore kits monster big bore kits for these and obviously head work and cams and stuff like that i think in the stock trim they're around about 120 horsepower at this altitude i would say this if i put this on a dyno i'd expect to see around about 110 but quite a lot of torque uh, again really easy popular mod is like a dyno jet kit in the carbs or a date jd jetting kit and this has had something done to the carbs um it's running these pod air filters these they're like a dual one that goes on both carbs and and it's got monster main jets in it i want to say they're 132 and a halves and on the FJ4, in which I joined when I bought it, just as a source of information, some guys like, you know, what jets are you using? And I, I said 132 and a half, and other people are like, oh, it's way too big. Oh, that's rubbish. Why are you doing that? And it can't be right. And I'll tell you what, this runs brilliant. Uh, revs all the way from the bottom to the top, super clean in every gear. So I was just like, well, say what you want, but this is, this is what it's got in it, and it runs absolutely great. So that's the only really mod that it's done. But again, you know, from what I read, exhaust the stock exhaust pipes are quite restricted if you put something else on the back of them um i've not seen a lot of slip-ons that are very nice i've seen some horrible looking ones and you can obviously buy a four into one in it if you buy a four into one for these you're going to have to sacrifice the belly pan because you don't get the clearance and you might have to sacrifice the center stand as well so just bear that in mind but i've not seen i think that company delkovic or delchevic or something which is actually two guys from stoke called derek and kevin uh so it's not that they're not that exotic um they they uh they offer some slip-ons and i say i've not i've seen some reviews of them I, I've, I've not really looked at set but there's some i, th I think it might be f1 made some horrible pipes and stuff like that I, i'm not really sure but I, i'm just going to leave the stock ones because I, I i don't need much power um you, you know back, back brakes decent enough you can upgrade that as well some people put uh, some people with gsxr wheels in them and things like that. I, the, the only other thing, I put some smaller indicators on the back because the, the indicators that were on the back stuck out about three feet. I didn't like them. So, uh, nice big comfy seat. Uh, you know, you can sit on this thing, cruise all day, very smooth at 80, 90, 100, 110. I regularly wind this thing up to about 125 and it gets there pretty easily. Noticeable buffeting and wind noise from the, from the screen there. You can get bigger screens and I might well invest in a bigger screen to take the wind off my head. Having said that, I bought a brand new RI helmet about a year ago. Um, online and you know and i've always bought ri helmets and i bought the same size ever and i'll tell you what it's the noisiest windiest horriblest helmet i've ever had and more to the point all the wind would go up the, the chin piece and right over your face didn't matter what bike i was riding tremendously irritating i bought one of those um i bought one of those uh it's called a, a wind jammer that kind of goes around the base of the helmet and basically puts this seal around your neck uh 20 bucks online wind jammer if you've got a lot of wind coming up the inside of your helmet so like i said you can do a lot of mods for these there's a very active owners forum on there there's not a huge amount of things to go wrong you can probably rack up a hundred thousand miles as long as you're nice to the engine and when i say nice change the oil and stuff like that i tend to change the oil every three or four thousand on this um brake pads use decent ones chains use the biggest fattest fucking chain you can get because uh, if you get a cheap chain on this it won't last long this chain's about on its on its last legs um, you know what else you modification shock absorbers well you can get an Olin shock for probably about a grand it's an awful lot of money to spend on a bike that cost me like 1800 bucks but a thousand dollars worth of shock on the back and I to be honest I haven't noticed that I need it but it can also change the dog bones on these uh, on the suspension cantilever and um, 
and raise the back end and they look quite nice with the back end raised and the rear fender off but like I said I'm not going to do any of that I, I'll just leave as it is I'm, I might I need to change the clutch seal because it's weeping a little bit um, and and, and also, actually, what this could benefit with, which is like a lot of bikes, like the Concourse and that, is basically um, foot peg lowers and handlebar risers. So I might get a set of handlebar risers, and they'll run you about 80 or 90 bucks for the risers. Foot peg lowering, I can't remember if, that, if they're available, but if they, I mean, Google it and you'll find out. But again, 80, 90, 100 bucks, something like that, just to give it a, make riding position a bit more comfortable. Um, people also say Corbin seats are very popular, um, and some guys like, you don't choose a Corbin seat, the Corbin seat chooses you. Yeah, whatever that means. So anyway, uh, Corbin seats are quite popular, but I think that, they, again, they, they, they make, they bring it down a little bit lower. They might be an inch or so low, and they look very hard on the surface, but but in actual fact, I'm sure they're very, very comfortable. Another mod is um, to get, there's some guy who makes like basically, basically solid handlebars to remove the vibration. Can you hear that whistling noise? That's an FJ, it's always whistle because it's almost like the heat off the engine just uh, expands the fuel. And, and so there's a mod there as well where you can open up the, the breather on the fuel pipe. Um, you know, I, I can't say too many bad things about this bike. I can only say good things. So I love it. Like I say, when I bought it about eight or nine months ago, I was like, yeah. You know, and getting on it after, get, after riding that concourse, it was just night and absolute night and day. So like I said, by the time 1993 came along, the competition had changed and the Yamaha was showing its age and I imagine that the emissions on the engine was, was probably part of you know, its death knell. But you know, these, were ve these engines were very, very popular in Legends cars and Legends cars are like a little kind of mini, mini about the size of an old mini, not a new mini, which isn't mini at all, um, but the size of an old mini uh, with, with this front engine, uh, with, the, with the Yamaha engine in the front. So a guy up the road was a very successful racer. He might have been the Colorado champion a few times. And so he would buy an FJ, take the motor, the CDI box and the carbs and give the rest to me and I'd eBay it. Or I'd buy an FJ, sell him the motor, the carbs and the CDI box and eBay the rest. So even still, about 10 or 12 went, went through the garage. Um, popular selling items, you know, brake calipers, instrument clusters, master cylinders, uh, bodywork. I mean, you know, if you get a good fairing, I, I just, I got a spare belly pan with this, and this belly pan's a bit beat up, but the one I got was really nice, and I was a bit skint one day, so I put it on eBay, and I got 200 bucks for it. Um, another time I was selling a fairing, and some guy in Russia wanted it, but it was too big to get in a box to ship to Russia, so he was like, can you hacksaw it in half for me? And I was like, and I was like, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna cut this bloody thing in half, so I didn't. What else happens? The front fenders melt. If you, if you tighten the brackets up too tight, but the front fender melts just here from the pipes and if you tighten up these bolts too tight they, they, they break look that looks like it's been plastic welded there um this thing's done i think 20 odd thousand no 30 odd thirty-five thousand miles and i say runs runs very nice just a bit of choke with the old fuel pump click in there and then good nice one with idle just just below a thousand just below a thousand RPM there. So again, um, a very nice motorcycle to ride, a lot of modifications available to make it even better, but very good right out of the box. So again, if I had a thousand bucks to spend, I, I well, I'd, I'd buy braided hose and put those blue dot calipers on. I'd probably change the front wheel for a slightly wider one. Um, what else would do to thousand dollars? Probably get some exhaust for it, probably replace the plastic, um, the plastic chain guard just for looks uh foot peg lowers handlebar risers and um add a corbin seat however i'm not the kind of guy who buys a bike and then spends a whole pile of money on it just you know on the, you know I mean, you buy a bike for two grand you don't want to necessarily spend two grand uh just well i don't anyway so i don't do that so that's it yamaha fj 1200 very very recommended um absolute mint pristine beautiful one three grand uh pig seven eight hundred bucks decent clean nice unscraped running one like this two grand twenty five hundred depending on the time of year that's dollars obviously uh, and if you want one there's there were quite a lot of them out there there's one up in cheyenne around here the guy wants two grand and it's done like uh, 70 or eighty thousand miles you know but it's still a reasonable price so you can get all kinds of luggage for them and stuff like that so uh five gallon tank 200 mile range maybe just a little bit over um and that's about it really like i say just uh, just uh, a wonderful, 
a wonderful sports touring bike. I really like it. It's talky. It's just so nice to ride off the throttle. You know, you've got that 55 mile an hour, you just give it a handful. You just go warp and, uh, and, and just picks up and takes off. Um, you know, again, single headlight, people put driving lights on them. I've put a big 100 watt bulb in the front of it to give me a bit more light. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know what else to say really, other than it's just a, a really, a really good motorcycle. Have I said that yet? You know. So anyway, let's have a look and see what else is, is, is see what else is in the garage today. Take a walk in. Ooh, what's that? That's a, that's a 1980 TS125, 185 that I just bought off a very nice gentleman in Loveland. Thank you very much. Ah, what's that? That's a 1983 XS650 Yamaha, which I've just got to finish cleaning the carbs on and put back together. But that'll be a very, very nice stock bike. Going to ask three grand for that. We'll probably get something close to it because recently in Denver on the Craigslist, all the um, all the XS650s out there are bobbed or chopped or screwed about and stuff. If you want to do that, it's fine. But you know, they'd say this is a very nice stock one. A uh, pair of ubiquitous gold wings, uh, 85 Limited and 86 SEI. 86 SEI is great sellers. Uh, old RC30 there and usual line of 980 sports bikes that haven't shifted in a long time. An old CBX tucked away in the corner. Uh, GL1000, nice set of Leicester wheels on it. Gave a bit too much money for that, but don't worry, I'll make on it. There's the old BMW Dakar, still going song. With 62,000 miles on it, I'll post another video on that soon as an update of what I did a while back. God, I've been talking for ages on it. And just turn the camera out and let's see what this is. Fuck me, it's a CX500 Turbo. Where did that come from? Well, it came off a very nice bloke in Boulder who called me up and said, you bought my RD350 six years ago. Do you want to buy this CX500? And I said, not really. He said, it's a Turbo. I said, all right then. So I gave him 2,500 bucks. It's really fucking nice and it's a blast to ride. So I just got to clean that up a bit and do a few little odds and ends in it. RG500 sat there not moving a long time. That hasn't. So anyway, that is the garage as of today. And actually, if we go up here, you can see, let's climb up on the old workbench there. You can see that was a picture of my FJ12 from 1990. And there's some, some guys, there's, who we got? We got Steve, Gaz, Splog, Shane. Shane's dead now, cancer, bummer. And Splog's yellow Z1300, my German helmet, and trigger receiver unit off a, a German MG34 machine gun dug up on the Russian front. Um, so that's kind of it really. So let's spin around, jump down, and uh, just go out to the FJ. Like I say, I can't say enough good things for this. If you just want a cheap motorcycle for blasting around that's not gonna cost you an arm and a leg to run, and, and, and cheap to buy, easy to get parts for, it's right here. The 1992 FJ1200, and it's a great fucking bike, if I haven't said that already.